keep you updated with what's going on. Next week, we've got a full week packed in for you. Now, obviously, Monday is going to be quite a big day for everybody when hopefully the um, following uh, form will be released. It will all be there for you. And you may well be busy filling in the forms. Now, on the basis that there are <clears throat> several million of you that have got to do it, I'm not sure whether you're going to be able to do it on day one. So when the system undoubtedly breaks down and you're still waiting, now you might want to tune in to us. We, we still do one, but it might be a, a short version. Unless, of course, by then, uh, we know what it looks like and we'll be able to comment on it. And, and I'm really waiting to see how, what comes out of that. Um, on uh, Tuesday, therefore, we will be doing a session on the form and filling in because I presume by then some of you might have a few difficulties. Uh, if not, I'd love you to come on and say, that was dead easy. Everybody's been furloughed. I'm done and dusted. It was very simple. That would be great. On Wednesday, we've got Caroline Plum coming on. Uh, Caroline Plum from Fluidly, the um, cash flow software. And those of you who come to Summit, uh, most of you do, but those of you who come to Summit, she was, uh, you'll remember Caroline. She was a great speaker there. She's been with us twice now. And then on Thursday, we've got James Spencer coming on from Tax Filer. Now, his system is very good at sorting out all this sort of stuff. And uh, particularly those of you who are working with self-assessment tax and your own stuff. James Spencer, for those of you who don't recognize the name, he's the great guy who jumped up on stage in the uh, where we got everybody to talk for a minute. Um, and um, he, he got quite a lot of laughs. He's, he's quite a character, so I'm looking forward to speaking to James. And then, of course, the following week, we've got Inspire Tour. Uh, not for the ICB to be put off by all this uh, coronavirus stuff. We're going to make that virtual, as everybody by now hope, uh, knows, I hope. So we will be doing uh, this program on Monday and Friday, but we won't for Tuesday, Wednesday and Thursday because they are going to be uh, put over to the Inspire Tour. So the first day, which is Tuesday, it's all about compliance. Um money laundering, complying with the rules and regulations, a very down-to-earth practical guide to how you do it, what the jargon means. So those of you who have been doing this for years, it's a good refresher. For those of you who are new to this, this will be a bit of an eye-opener, and it will take away all the scariness, but it will tell you exactly what you have to do to be compliant. We'll be talking about one of the areas where we're 12 months worth of inspections uh, under our belt, now 18 months worth of inspections. We found there are a few loopholes in what people are doing, and there are some of them that are cropping up time and time again. So we're going to talk that through with you as well. On day two, uh, we're going to do a payroll update. Now, that could take the form of this is how everything's gone with furloughing but also some new rules and regs that are being released at the moment they are slowly sneaking things in um, whilst everybody else is, is concerned about uh, furloughing and also there will be uh, an instructional bit on cash flow so look out for that as well and then on day three which is thursday it's all about practice development you know what you can do next etc it's sort of building the business uh, looking after the businesses who come out of the coronavirus uh, lockdown, uh, new things that you'll have to do for your business, things you'll have to do for your clients, and how to build on that, and what else to look out for, what other services you might be able to offer, how to do that, and generally cover quite a lot there. Now, each of these is going to run for, well, I'm told an hour, but knowing these things, they'll probably go on for about an hour and a half, and then they will be recorded and be accessible later on in the day. So if you can't make the 11 o'clock slot, you can take it on later in the day. And then they will be available to members uh, who have paid uh, the £45 um, to uh, take it down at any time. And then obviously, if you want to use that as the basis for your training for staff, etc., that will be helpful. But so that's £45 for all three. So that's only £15 per day. So we don't think that's bad. Um, and uh, uh, so we, we hope you'll like that. We are talking about the possibility of giving you an e-badge after you've done all of that, which is great. But more importantly, probably, you will get three hours worth of CPD if you stay on for all three of those. Um, uh, and also integrated in with that, we're going to put together a short question and answer test on each of those days. And if you take that as well, 
your CPD points will become structured rather than unstructured. So we'll know, are you taking a test that you understood what was going on and that you know what you're doing? So uh, that's, uh, I think, all I've got on um, that for next week and I inspire for the following week. So please start booking in for that. There's already well in excess of 300 books for that. We, we do expect a big number. Uh, I don't think we've got a limit on our uh, Zoom at the moment, but it's nice to know who's coming along. And when we know exactly who's coming, what levels of membership we've got, etc., we can, even at this late stage, begin to tailor it a little bit towards the people that are on there. Um, one bit of good news, if I can just tell you, one thing I picked up today from Twitter, uh, Sarah Douglas, hello if you're on, Sarah. Uh, Sarah from uh, Glasgow. Uh, she uh, was telling us this morning that she's her client, has just picked up uh, the, the £200,000 grant from RBS that he applied for. So well done, Sarah, to you and your client for getting that one sorted. I think when we were looking at the council grants, Scotland began the council grants much earlier than everybody else. So well done up there. Obviously, you don't have very many people up there. It's all it's all, uh, it's all all grass and green and locks and all the rest of it. So that's probably got a lot to do with it. But uh, so well done, Sarah, uh, as always. Right there as before, getting everything sorted. So great. So, Jackie, um, yeah. if you looked at our first day and our last yesterday, um, very many similar questions. I think people um, coming at this at different times and mm. uh, for some uh, new questions, for some of them they might well be old, but uh, what have you got to give us as, as far as updates are concerned? Um, right, as far as updates, firstly with all the emails, I think we've cleared the backlog of the emails now. A lot of them have been raised on the webinars as well as coming in by emails, but I've been answering them anyway. And I've, as Gary said yesterday, some of you I've rung, some of you I've sent emails back to member services. Um, so we, hopefully we should be up to date. And what I'm finding is that the questions are becoming much more specific now to individual cases. And there are a couple on the question and answers already that are, I'll we'll pick up on later. Um, I've been doing some research this morning. Um, at the meeting yesterday, uh, that I was online meeting with HMRC yesterday, um, they did say there would be an update today. And an update has been issued this morning from uh, HMRC about the portal. Um, it is on <coughs> their hub, and we will put something up on our COVID-19 hub about this as well. Definitely opening on Monday, that's confirmation. And there is, has been some uh, query with the change of data to the 19th of March, from the 28th of February to the 19th of March, which has obviously raised quite a lot of queries. Um, basically, they are still quoting the two dates. Now, the reason they're still quoting the two dates is that if you had somebody who was on payroll on the 28th of February and then laid them off or they left and went for another job, and they've come back and you can take them back on and furlough them from the 1st of March. But they've ex they have definitely extended the, the new starters to the 19th of March. So if you had somebody who was on a payroll up to the 19th of March, then you can furlough them and claim the furlough grant back, provided that you have made an RTI submission. So we basically, if they're on weekly pay and you've paid them weekly and you've done an RTI submission, they will be covered if they were employed for after the 1st of March. But if you took them on on the 1st of March and you furloughed them and they're not being paid until the end of the month, then at the moment they are still going to fall through the gap. Um, we have, I raised that with HMRC yesterday, as you can imagine, I haven't had an answer yet. We've got quite a few queries outstanding that I'll just mention yeah. to you later. So the portal will be open on Monday, uh, just to confirm who can access it. As long as you have access uh, through your through a government gateway account, be that as an employer or as a tax agent, if you have a full access, you will be able to make the claim yourself. If you are something called a file only agent, which is basically, I think what happens is when you just send the information to the agent who's doing the upload and they don't have the details of the individual employees then they cannot make the claim for you so it's got to be the employer that does it now the employer may not have their own access to the hmrc gateway and they are going to have to make a very rapid application 
in order to access the portal. Um, they're making, they're trying to streamline the application process, make it faster, make it via email rather than by post. Uh, the comment from uh, my contact, contact at HMRC yesterday was, I can't believe we're still doing this by post. We've all mentioned that to them on a number of occasions. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, they snail mail. Um, so it's being launched. If you, just to confirm what Sir Julia said yesterday, if you're... Uh, company has 100 or more employees then you must do the claim uh, by file submission by a file upload submission so that can be an excel file or other forms of files an extract from your payroll you need to give the relevant information upload the file and then that will happen if you have 99 or fewer employees you are going to have to manually input the details of every one um, and the information that you will need um, is obviously your government gateway password so you can log on. Um, you need for each individual that you're claiming for, you need their name, national insurance number, the claim period and the claim amount. And I don't know yet, but I would imagine it's a to and from date because it's the claim period. Your claim for whatever you've done. So we can now claim in the first claim, we can claim back to to the 1st of March, providing that it's a minimum of three weeks. And you have submitted the information through the RTI because um, what then is gonna happen is that HMRC will do a, um, a quick check against the RTI that's been submitted. And you should have your grant back within six days. So you'll need to give them bank details to pay that directly into the bank. And they're aiming to get it back within six days. Now, it'll be interesting to see what happens when it opens on Monday. Gary, as you said, I wonder <laughs> what's going well, to happen. But... I don't know, hope they've, yes, but I think it's just a question of, of hanging on in there. Jackie, um, can I just ask, uh, you yeah. said that uh, it's, it's a bit late for employers, but they need to get themselves together very quickly if they're going to apply to be able to submit them themselves. Presumably, it's too late now for one of our members to apply to become a tax agent if they well, have already apply because it <clears throat> once that comes through they can then do it maybe retrospectively yeah, get that in yeah uh, so i think if you're looking to do that then that needs to be done asap get yourself and if they haven't up. done it already how do they do that um you'll have to log on to your own personal government gateway account uh, or your business account if you're self-employed um, and apply to add the pay or tax you have to apply to be a tax agent first and when you've got your tax agent through, you log in as your tax agent, and then you add PAYM as the service that you want to offer. Don't forget, you've also got to get the relevant uh, permissions from your clients to do that. Um, we did have, there, there are some articles on the website about applying to be an agent through NTD, and that applies anyway. So uh, there are some links. I think if you go into the newsletters, I think it's one of my technical updates. If you look at the technical updates from about six months ago, there is a applying to be an MTE uh, and making tax digital tax agent. And there's quite a lot of information there, but there were some bugs in the system that sorted itself now. So it should be fairly self-explanatory. Well, so I was thinking about putting that up as a, a special uh, section on the website, isn't it? I'll, well, we'll yeah. talk about that after. after yeah. that, okay. It's quite, it's a fairly complicated process because you actually have to apply to be two, to get two accounts. So it, it, rather than going to it today, we'll get something up. For okay, you. yeah, excellent. Um, so hopefully um, we will look at that on Monday and see what's happening. I'm uh, trying to get access to that myself. So hopefully I'll be able to have a look at it on, uh, on, on Monday. Monday. That'll be good. We've got questions coming in already, so just to give you a bit of a brief, yeah. if I may, Jane has, has asked uh, the eight, if the 80% of furloughed employees' salary is above the two and a half maximum, would the employer have to top up the 80%? No, they only have to pay 80% that they have claimed. Yeah. Uh, she then goes on to say if it's it's, it's normally 4,000, can the employer pay two and a half? Um, the thing is, the, the 80%, you calculate the 80%, and you pay either 2,500. Or a lower figure than that, it will be low, but you can't, you don't pay anything higher, you no. won't get that back. You won't you, get it back. The employer can up, update it and pay the full amount if the employer so wishes, but most uh, people that have been furloughed, I don't think, are getting that. So, in other words, if somebody is on normally earns 2000 a month, 
they'll your claim for them will be sixteen hundred. So that that's how that works. It's twenty percent of their normal salary, isn't it? Great. Um, yeah, that's correct. And of course, don't forget it has to be done in agreement with them. And that was James. So thank you very yeah. much, James. Yes, it must be an agreement. And they're pushing that at the moment, aren't they? Um, yes. Normal employment law. It uh, still stands. You have to have everything by agreement. It has to be in your contract, et cetera, et cetera. Right. To be honest with you, faced with being either laid off or furloughed, I think most people go for the furlough and they will sign up to it. But anyway, that's, uh. so that's good. How do you claim for under 16 years old if they have no <coughs> NI number? Audrey Barnum. Um, well, mm, not, I'm not sure about that one because I, I have a funny feeling you can't um, because you do need their national insurance number in order to claim. But it depends on... <clears throat> as I understand it, and it's a while since I've run, I have to say it's a while since I've run a payroll and done an RTI submission, whether you have to give an NI to have them on the payroll anyway, because if you haven't made an RTI submission yeah. for them, you can't claim it back. No, no you're probably right. And Paula Beasley Smith has just said, what no tie, it must be dressed down Friday. Paula, yes. You obviously missed the beginning. You missed the start, there. Paula. It is dressed down catch up, Friday. Yeah, catch up, girl. <laughs> yeah. Actually, Paula, I think it was you I was talking to for a lot of that time, and that's why I haven't had a chance to put the tie on. <laughs> um, if you take someone back on now that the date has changed to 19th of March, do you pay arrears for furlonged pay, Audrey? I would say yes, because you're going to get it all back anyway. And if you laid them off, the furlough goes back to the 1st of March, and it's not going to cost you anything, so pay them the furlough pay and claim it back. We and did. Patrick Udale has just said, breaking news, the chance was just announced the furlough period is being extended to the end of June. So I think that um, yes, tells so you what's going on. Yeah, that's because of the extension of the lockdown, I think, isn't it? Yeah. What are the rules regarding pensioners? Are there are so many still working, both <clears> self-employed <throat> and on payrolls. Elaine Boyer. I think if they, if they don't pay furloughed pensioners, then they're discriminating. <laughs> it, <laughs> and that's what we all think, isn't it, Jackie? Yes, as, yeah, as definitely. People, yes, yeah, well, as someone who's firmly in that category, I think they should be paid. No, seriously, that you cannot discriminate. And if you have somebody on uh, who is on a payroll, they they're entitled to the furlough pay. Right, and I've got one here from Tony De Maye, or uh, I think that's how you pronounce it. Sorry, Tony, if not. Hi, I've been trying to book a mock exam for my Ideal Schools course, but I'm getting no answer from the switchboard. Uh, I know all of you are working from home, but can I still do this by phone? Uh, Tony, yes, I'm really sorry about that. You should be able to, because um, when I'm contacting the staff, I do exactly the same thing. Um, so, yeah, uh, uh, I've been getting... Uh, Tony, do yeah. Ideal Schools not book those? or do you, I don't, can't remember whether you book them yourself through Ideal Schools or whether they book it. They always used to book it for you. Yeah, they used to book them up, the didn't they? Yeah. Oh, I guess to check, check on that whilst we're we'll on. Uh, um, oh, Audrey Parnham question. Yeah. Furloughing for two weeks and then had to go and work on an essential service contract for MOD for a week. And now the boys are back on furlough. The three weeks continuous furlough period has been invalidated. It doesn't seem fair my client loses out on claiming for those two weeks. As it stands at the moment, it's unfair. Because the minimum is three weeks. But it's MOD, isn't it? You'd have thought that would have been made, taken into yeah. account. Huh? Yeah, I, I don't know. We might have to uh, look, Audrey. I'll see if I can get something back from um, HMRC on that one. Right, okay. I'll make a note. Um, Philippa says, several of my clients have now received a £10,000 grant. Is this subject to corporation tax? It's treated as an income, isn't it? It's treated as income, so yes, we think it is. <clears throat> if, if they still make profit if they're still making profit and the grant is there because their income has been reduced um if they're still working full-time then yes they will have to pay corporation tax on but i think the idea is is to get them through uh through this cash flow crisis we have a nursery who had to temporarily close they will still receive their usual funding this has been confirmed but they also plan to furlough their staff can the nursery staff receive funding and also receive 80% reimbursement of staff costs. There is a specific paragraph on nurseries in the uh, government uh, on gov.uk that I was looking at today, but I, I have to say I didn't read it. Um, 
bookkeeping team, uh, I'll send you a link to the information. Okay, that'd be great. Um, and yeah, that's gone right. up. There's been an update to the uh, job retention scheme today. Will we receive a link to join the Inspire Tour soon? No, you won't receive that until probably on the morning. I will check with Soby. Soby's actually online at the moment. So, uh, Soby, if I can just ask you, do you, when will they receive their invitation to actually come on to the Inspire Tour Zoom? No, she's not. She switched off because she doesn't want to listen in. Okay. Uh, I think it will be early on the morning because you'll, there are lots of emails going out about Zoom meetings and it's trying not to confuse you too much. But um, I will check with um, with uh, Sobi beforehand. Sorry, I'm here. I just couldn't. Sobi, you are there, yeah. Um, when will people be getting their um, invitations to come onto the Zoom for the Inspire Tour? In the next week. Hopefully... Um... Towards the end of next week, they should receive their links. Will they? Oh, in advance of the week then. Okay, I've told you complete rubbish then. Absolutely, that's what I do. So the end of next week, but don't panic. If, but you should have it by the latest Monday, do you think? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so I hope um, I hope that's uh, fine. That was Kat who said that. And uh, great to know that you've booked in, Kat. Fantastic. Does the three-month furlough start at the 1st of March or the date... It was announced. First of March. It's from the day you furloughed. I mean, they can be furloughed back to the first of March. That was okay. always on the cards. That's why they had the twenty eighth of yeah. February initial deadline, so that the furlough is backdated to the first of March, even though it was announced on the nineteenth. The nineteenth of March date has come in to fill that two three week gap between the twenty eighth of February and the nineteenth of March when the lockdown was announced. So that's, right. that's and then, uh, this is from day. Julia Williams, and it, she comes to say, at what point should notice be given to employees if they are to be made redundant to ensure that their pay is covered by furlough? No, um, not redundant. Uh, you can't people. make them redundant furlough. if you're going to put them on furlough. Apparently, they can use furlough time in lieu of working their notice. Ooh. Really? Ooh. That's a new one. Yeah, I haven't heard that one before. Because the whole idea is that you don't make them redundant. You put them on furlough until the whole lockdown is over and the business starts up again. We have had this query before about what happens if a business actually has to go into liquidation and the staff have to be laid off. You would have to go through your normal redundancy processes because as Gary said earlier, employment law still stands. And if you're paying them in lieu of notice, I would imagine furlough pay will count but i'm not sure what happens because we did talk about the possibility that if somebody furloughs and then makes them all redundant were they just doing it for the sake of it and had no intention to carry on trading in which case might the grant have to be paid back i think we're going to have to wait and see on that one gary yeah, any uh, I did, yeah i mean i mean if you're only using it to pay um yeah, redundancy notice. I mean, you're obviously not intending at this uh, stage to come back on. No, I, th I think that that would be seen as wrong. But Julia, we'll try and get you some more information on that. But that's certainly what I would think at the moment. I think it, when these questions have been asked, the, 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 the Treasury's stock answer is this, this is a job retention scheme. It yeah. is not in lieu of redundancy. It is to keep your jobs open until such time as the, the, the pandemic is, uh, the lockdown has been released and you yeah. can start trading again, so. And I think if, if companies are found to have had that and then closed down anyway, a lot of questions will be asked, but uh, Barry Peake has just come on. Yes, Barry, hi, um, we, we've had, uh, just had notice of that, the job retention scheme being expanded, but he also quite rightly calls it the job retention scheme, as we've just been saying. Um, if you have an agent's PAYE government gateway for a client, can you claim for that, says Gail? Yeah, that's just claiming with, on the client's Yes, you're, if, Yes, yeah. if you do that, you can log in as an agent and claim on their behalf. Um, or it's the employer that's logging in and uh, yeah. just be very careful that you do have the correct access to do that as an agent. And Shiona says, if it is monthly pay, can I submit the 30th of April submission on Monday? 
you can claim, I think, up to two weeks in advance, as long as your RTI has been submitted. You can only claim for the RTI. So, for example, if you run your payroll and submit it on the middle of the month, the RTI has to be submitted on or before the day you pay them. So if you are paying them, say, on the 30th of April and you run your payroll on today, say, on Monday, you can apply for the whole amount up to the end of April because that's two weeks in advance. So I think the answer to that could be yes. Yeah. Helen um, asks, there's been a certain level of interpretation on uh, furloughing, which will probably lead to some errors in claiming. How will HMRC deal with this? I think they've been pretty straightforward that if it's a genuine error, they certainly won't um, decide to have you towed away to the tower or anything. Um, yeah, it, it can. there can be misinterpretations always. It's what you think looks, If you've got to be able to prove it looks realistic when you did it and there was a good reason for you making that decision. Um, and I, I think that's it. It's, the, the idea is that this, this money is available, but they don't want okay. fraudulent activity. So if it's not fraudulent, if, it, if it's an obvious error, I think they will deal with it. Um, I think the word graciously was, meant, was mentioned at one stage. I've not heard that used before in terms of HMRC, but we will see. Um, I set up hi, I set up an agent and struggling to get it activated and can't get any help from HMRC. The lines just cut off uh, cut off any suggestions. Yeah, Judith, I'll call you after the meeting. I'll give you a call after the meeting. I'll get your number and give you a call. I'll, that's one we can deal with on a one-to-one -one basis, I think. Um, uh, Maggie says, I'm a payroll agent. I only have access to my client's PAYE. Will I be able to access, access from here or need to log in through the client portal, when I, which I use for VAT? So they've both got what clients got yeah, me, they've got the Maggie says, probably you would sign in with your normal tax agent government gateway. I think it depends on what access you have. Um, I only have access to my client's PAYE. If you are a full agent for PAYE, you can log on and upload it for the RTI from your own system, then you, you will be able to do the claim. I hope that answers your question, Maggie. I'm not sure. Jill says, has there been any clarification regarding weekly paid employees in working out the average monthly amount? I think that's been pretty well <laughs> explained, hasn't it? I mean, um, yes, but I think also we're not, I'm not sure we need to average because what you're claiming for now, what's come through on the portal notes today, is that you claim from date to date exactly what you pay. So if you're paying weekly, claiming once a month you'll just claim up to a certain date and you can't um so i'm not sure the averaging comes in unless you're using that to work out an av average monthly amount you can do it weekly i don't think you need to work out monthly and pay them monthly i would carry on doing it weekly but anybody that earns two and a half thousand or more then that's simple, isn't it? it? It's just those people who take home, who earn less than the two, two and a half thousand, isn't yeah. it? That's where it's going to get complicated, yeah. I think. But uh, uh, I have an employer who has an, that was Jill, by the way, I have an employer who has an employee started 16th of March, first RTI submitted 24th of March, then laid off as no, as hmm. work, no work can be carried out. Can they be re-employed with the no. latest change to dates? No, I think no. that's one that's going to fall through the slap because uh, the deadline it had to be submitted on or before the 19th of March however they do this and it may be that sometime down the line they'll extend the date again because what might happen is that as they extend the end date for furlough as they've just done they may very well extend the start date so if that happens and they extend it say to the end of April so that all of those who fit into this bit might you might be able to claim it back but as it stands at the moment no you can't uh rachel says hi for furloughed staff with pay due to be paid on the 28th of april for the month will you only be able to claim up to the 20th of april and then claim the 20th to the 28th on the 28th you can only claim for what you've done a submission for yeah. so if they're being paid on the 28th it depends and you're claiming on the 20th no, you can only claim in advance, providing you've done the RTI, because they do need to see exactly how much you pay them. And they will be checking, I think, on the RTI to see um, how it goes. So you may have to claim again. 
Um, oh, Audrey, Audrey Putnam come back. says you can have employees under 16 on your payroll without an NI number. I can't remember. I've got one of those little cards from uh, years ago. Um, I don't know when I got that. When would I get that? Eight, 16, 16, 18? 16. When? I've, got, 16. I've still got mine somewhere. <laughs> um, they don't get them anymore, Gary. They don't get no, them. I, they, they um, I will, I will um, email my client. The, the the chair of the group that I'm that, that we're a member of, which is the uh, professional bodies group for tax agents. Um, they have said if we've got any specific queries, to email them, and I I've got three or four out with them at the moment. So I will send that off to my contact and come back with an answer for that audio. But I can't answer it today. We've we got might two know here. on Monday. Yeah, we might know. I mean, I've got two here from Anonymous that we, we've been trying to sort out, I think, for the last week. Both are the same, both same idea. But if my client wants her stuff to be furloughed from the 1st of April for the whole month, can she insist that they take 10 days holiday within this time? Can you take mm -hmm. holiday and be furloughed at the same time, or is it one or the other? And then the second one might be the same Anonymous, I'm not sure, is if staff are furloughed over the two, week, or the two bank holidays... Do they carry these two holidays forward? Right. The first one, I think, um, I think you can insist they take their holiday. We think, but that's information has been changing daily on that one. I think you cannot take holiday and be furloughed at the same time because if you're on holiday, you're not available to work. Therefore, you can't be furloughed. Um, the bank holidays. Now, I had a, a discussion with a member yesterday morning, I think, about this, so where they uh, their staff all take bank holidays. And if your, if your contract of employment states that you have 28 days holiday a year, which will include, which can include bank holidays, but you're in an organization which would normally work bank holidays. So for example, you're in retail or something, then those bank holidays will be a normal working day and you can carry them forward. If however, you're in a job where basically your bank holidays are taken as normal holidays, I think you've got to take a decision on that because all these holidays being carried forward is gonna cause a big problem over the next two years with people wanting to take it. This particular uh, client of one of our members said she wanted to pay them for their holiday and they had agreed that Friday and Monday would be holiday. So what they're doing is they're going to pay them the full rate and cover it themselves for the Monday and the Friday and then claim the furlough for the other four days, but they will not carry their holiday forward, but they're not gonna claim the furlough because they're on holiday. Does that make sense? Hmm. Now, um, Julia Williams, should I make my RTI submission early, even though they will not be dated or paid until the 30th of April? This is, now, if I think back to, to Ian, there's a payment date and a pay date. I'm trying to think, Ian covered this in his webinar. Um, I don't think there's anything to stop you running your payroll and submitting it in advance and then paying them and, but your pay date then becomes the date you make, you, you run the payroll. The pay, pay date, the payment date is slightly later. So, um, uh, Ideal schools mock question here. Thank you, Louise. We call ICB for the first mock and book the second to the school uh, as they pay for it. So um, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm Neil. I'm only the president. I don't get involved with these things. So <laughs> I, know, I, I couldn't remember the system when I used to deal with it. Um, yeah, so I think they do pay get... for one, but our, our students do like to take lots of mocks. They enjoy taking them. And in fact, lots of our members also take mocks to polish up on what they learn. So that's really good. But thank you for that anyway, Louise. Uh, we need to get, um, perhaps, Sobe, if you're listening, can we get somebody to ring Tony and, and see, see if possible? Yeah, I've just, I've just sent a note out. But yeah, if you could do that, that'd be great. Yeah, no um, Leander says, does anyone know how to contact the valuation office as a client is eligible for the SBRR grant, but we cannot chase the valuation, valuation office as it is closed? I've emailed and contacted their contact page. No reply now for over a fortnight. The answer to that one is no, I I don't. I don't know whether anybody else might have that's listening might have come up with this one. I certainly wouldn't know. 
No, I don't know. Um, uh, why would you need a valuation? Is that not yeah. on the documents that you'll already receive? Or is it new clients or something? A client is eligible for the grant. Perhaps they haven't yet. I, I would, I mean, I think you've got to contact the council who are issuing the grants and see, see what the situation is, because isn't it the council that's responsible for the valuations? Forgive yeah. me, it's a long yeah. time since I've dealt with these yeah. things. Okay. I think you'd need to contact the uh, somebody at the local council and see what the situation is on that one. Yeah. Uh, we've got one here from Cumulus Bookkeeping. You obviously work in the cloud. Are the grants subject to VAT if operating flat rate scheme VAT? We've had this one before and I, I, did, I haven't managed to get an answer. Um, I didn't no. I would say no because this is a grant for payroll, which is oh, flat rate scheme is based on income, isn't it? Let me think about that one. My gap reaction to that would be no because it's an income for something which is outside the scope of that because wages is outside the scope of that altogether. Mm. And things like um, flat rate scheme doesn't include, if I remember, things like the purchase of assets over two thousand pounds because you 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 claim the VAT back anyway separately on that. I have a funny feeling that they wouldn't be, because payroll is an out of scope item. Okay, yeah, it could be. Um, yeah, yeah, we had somebody on the other day. Actually, it turned out not to be an ICB member, ah. but a bookkeeper, and they were saying. Uh, I've got two freelancers. How do I furlough them? Uh, you don't. Uh, they're freelancers. They are self-employed and they look after themselves. But anyway, we had a um, discussion. Sorry, there is, there's one just come back here. Sorry, just to confirm, can you claim back to the 1st of March, although you didn't furlough them until the 23rd of March? No, you can only you can only furlough them from the date you actually furloughed them. If you were if they were working for you until the 23rd of March, you can't furlough, you can't claim the furlough back if they were working because they were generating income. It's only if you laid them off, you can then go back and bring them back on a furlough and pay furlough money under the job retention scheme from the 1st of March. If they were working and weren't laid off, you can't claim them until they were actually furloughed. And um, Jason Olson says, can I wait until April's payroll and claim for two pay periods, March and April? Uh, the notes I've got says you claim from day one, the start date to the end date, you give a beginning and end. So I would think yes, because your minimum is three weeks. Um, there doesn't seem to be any maximum. So I would say yes, go for the two months in one go, possibly. Uh, Julia Williams just come on to clarify that earlier question about uh, furlough being used as redundancy pay. The decision to make them redundancy has not been made yet. It depends on how long this goes on. Um, therefore, really, you have to make that decision at the time, I think. Um, making, a, a, making staff redundant is a big decision, obviously, and you will not make it likely. It will be after discussion with the staff. So I don't. Uh, I think at that stage, furloughing would stop, and and they'd go into whatever plans um, are normal. But yeah, uh, yeah. I think as a bookkeeper, you need to be very careful with that. You need to make sure that your client is looking at things properly and calculating things properly. And now that we know that we're going to be buttoned down probably until uh, the end of June, three weeks anyway. Um, you know, uh, possibly end of June. You need to work with them to try and make sure that they can work their way through this and then make that decision. Again, talk to us at a later date when you've got a bit more information, I think. Uh, Gary, there's one coming on the chat um, about calculating part month furloughs by working days or percentage of the month. The way the the way ICB has always uh, calculated and suggested that you calculate it is to work a daily rate based on their annual income, divided by 52, divided by the number of working days in a week, and that's the number of days. That's Sorry, that's the daily rate, and then multiply that by the number of days. Because if you do it any other way, um, you're gonna get a different figure depending on which month. That's how I've always worked it out. Daily rate times the number of days you're furloughing them for. Um, there's a good one here. I don't think we've come across this one before. So Olivia Ney, thank you very much for that. What about the situation? Client advised employees starting furlough. Two days later, the employee has added in his notice. The employee must give four weeks notice. 
how is this to be treated? Honestly, <laughs> I'd say, come on, gardening leave and make him go and <laughs> say sorry. But the thing is, does the notice period stand in the first week of employment? Is there a minimum? Gary, you're better at employment law than I am. No, I don't think he's saying that. What he's saying is he's got a normal employee. He's been advised he's going to be furloughed. But two days after he was given that advice, he's found another job. But under the terms of his job, he's got to do four weeks notice. So the employer is not retaining him because he knows he's going. Can you therefore use it as a furlough? So I presume the employee's actually been with him for some time or with her or ever for yeah. some time. I think uh, we better take advice on that one. Yeah, I think it's a bit speculative. I mean, I would say possibly yes, but again, this is something in agreement. I, I suppose also it depends on when the start date is for the new job because if the new job can start straight away, I'd agree that you waive the notice period and let them go as soon as possible, but that's just... Yeah. Me. If a new member of staff started on the 27th of February and is not eligible for furlough, uh, are they still classed as staff? Or if they go and get another job, would you just P45 them? You have certainly P45 them. And that gets rid of the whole issue anyway, because that's linked to the previous one. Um, you can, there's nothing to stop you P45 in them if they've got another job, I don't think. Are they still classed as staff? Again, you've got to decide, you've got to look at whether or not an RTI submission has been made. And basically, if an RTI submission has been made by the 19th of March, then they're on the government system and you can furlough them and, and pay them. If they're not, you can't. Mm, right. Um... Something here from Olivia. Oh, that's Olivia. That was the last one, wasn't it? A little while ago. Uh, so the furlough claim with HMC would have to be done several times, be yeah. e monthly after RTI run. Yeah. Um, Sue Raisin's got one here. I have a client with four weekly and monthly payroll and also weekly and monthly payroll. Do you think it would be possible to make multiple claims to coincide with the different timings? We won't know until you open. I think you can only make one claim for a period. I'm sure we've read that somewhere. So if you've got multiple pay dates and you're changing it, I think you can only make, so if you've got weekly ones that overlap monthly ones, I don't think you can claim for the week and then claim for the month because the dates will overlap. I have a feeling it's only one claim per time period, but we'll know on Monday. And there's an anonymous question, will we be sent a link to the portal? Um, no, I don't think so, but it's gonna be fairly Fairly up there, I think, on the front of the gov.uk website under the furlough, uh, under the COVID-19 information. It will be there. And, I mean, we've had this question in different forms a number of times. If staff are paid monthly but based on weekly hours, is the best way to calculate the average prior over the prior 12 months or do we have to go back over 52 weeks? And I think you said you can actually choose the, the most um, yeah, useful it depends, uh, it depends. Yeah, if they're zero hours, if they have a zero hours contract, then you have to go back over the past 52 working weeks. We've agreed it was the same as the holiday, the new holiday legislation. If they've worked regularly for you, but have uneven wages, so uh, variable wages, but they're on a standard contract, then it is the higher of either the relevant month in the last year or the average of the past 12 months or 52 weeks. Um, and right yeah emma dowell is there a limit on the frequency of claims you can make on the portal for instance if i apply on monday for my clients on behalf of their march for a low pay can i apply a week or so later for their april pay once i've run their april payroll or would i have to wait three weeks we don't know really do we no we don't know but i would think yes because if you can do um a claim for a period then i think as long as the dates follow on I would think it'll be right, but these are the sort of questions we'll know a lot more about on next week. Um, Have you seen this one from Sean about the weekly pay? Are we? If you've already the furlough is reduced. It's coming in at five hundred eighty-three a week. Uh, I think five eighty-three point three two two four three two two three. Right. The brain doesn't do maths of Sean on a Friday afternoon. It doesn't do mental arithmetic very well. <laughs> You've already paid 2,500. The furlough is reduced. 
the problem you've got with that isn't it is that because some months are five weeks in a month five paydays in a month that's going to cause a problem yeah perhaps a bit more detail Time, might be oh, oh times 12 divided by 52 See, if you take 2,500 a month, multiply it by 12 and divide by 52, it comes out at 576 pound 92 a week. Slightly under your 583, but as I say, my arithmetic's not good on a Friday afternoon. Um, a maximum of 2,500 pounds per month. Again, Sean, I think what's gonna happen is that if you, work out your figures and apply, they'll check it and they will come back and tell you whether you've overclaimed, I think. Yeah, because that's 2,527 a month, isn't it? I mean, for 27 pounds, I mean, they'll claw that back later if there's a problem. I don't think mm. there's much in it, is there really? Mm -hmm. um, I have a county um, sale that was applied for before the lockdown, but the details were not received on 28th of March. So February and March were submitted then. Do I take it that this will fall through the gaps, Nikki? Mm. It could do. It, you had your application in. It's a question of whether they have the application down there. Again, I think, Nikki, I think you're going to have to try it out next week and see see what happens. These are the sort of questions that are going to become clear next week. Um, We're digging heavily into the questions here, Jackie. Was there anything else yeah. you wanted to talk yeah, about? Yeah, I was going to say, if we take a break from the questions, I've got a couple of other updates here. Yeah. Um, I've been uh, looking at the updates from HMRC and the self-employment grant, there is some more information come out on that today um, because I know this was asked yesterday. Um, HMRC will contact the self-employed by mid-May, it says here, and payments will be are due to be paid early June. So that's a slight update on what we've heard before. Oh, we did say they, they will have to get the portal up and running first for the job retention scheme and then look at the self-employed. So mid-May, with payments planned for early June. Um, the SSP reclaim, if you have any anybody for whom you're claiming about the 14 days SSP, uh, that has to be claimed online via the portal. But I still don't know whether it is this particular job retention scheme portal or whether there is going to be a separate portal opening. It didn't have that in the information. All it said is you have to apply online via a portal. So I would think they might still be working on that one. Um, we've spoken a lot over the last three to four weeks about uh, directors um, and what they can and can't do. One of the topics we had quite a lot of discussion about with HMRC yesterday was exactly what employers' duties are and uh, what's covered under the Companies Act. And we as a group have asked HMRC to look at the wording in the rules as to what direct, what constitutes duties, as to whether payroll actually constitutes duties and VAT returns because they are statutory and someone has to do them. We've always said go ahead and do them, but some of the other uh, representatives of other bodies are disagreeing with that. So we're waiting for HMRC to give um, to give a definite answer on that. Whether we'll get one remains to be seen. The main guidance was it must not be generating revenue, but that, that yeah. also is a bit of a grey one, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, I've been doing some research this morning and reading the up-to-date information on the shielding if you're shielding and, and are you eligible to uh, be furloughed? Now, we've said, yes, you can be furloughed, but there is actually a lot more information on the government's website on this. Now, basically, starting from the beginning, because mm. it is very confusing and they do seem to double back on themselves. If you have someone who cannot work because they are in isolation or are sick, then you pay them SSP. Now this was the, uh, and claim it back for 14 days. Now this was the um, information that came up before the furloughing scheme was announced, that the prime minister announced. And that still stands, that is still in the document. If they cannot work, and this is for a company who is still working and operating. 
if you have a member of staff who cannot work either because they are shielding or because they have childcare because the children are at home and aren't at school and you therefore cannot go to work, then you are unable to work, even though there is work for you, but you can be furloughed. But I think as I understood it this morning, it's up to the employer as to whether they can furlough you or put you on sick pay. It's obviously better to be furloughed. So the later advice seems to be that anyone who is shielding or taking time off because they live with someone who is very vulnerable, they can be furloughed. But the original information on statutory sick pay is still in the details. So I think we'll stand by what you've said that yes, you can furlough them, but again, it has to be in agreement. And I think the government are accepting this is within the spirit of it. And if you can't work because you, you're having to stay at home because the government have insisted that you stay at home, then yes, you can be furloughed. But it's still quite, quite confusing on that one. Um, because the rules say that if you are taking time off from work for childcare uh, things, then there is no statutory right to be paid. So I think the furloughing has overridden the statutory right not to be paid. So I think it's still coming back to the last bit of information in the, in the details is that the employer can furlough them if they wish. So we hope they will, because then they're going to get all their money back anyway. Mm. Um, I think that's all I had. Um, in that case, I'll, I'll jump in while you're thinking about it. Uh, yeah. When you do a claim, does it have to be three week intervals? Or do you think moving forward, you'll be able to claim weekly? I haven't heard that. No, I think you can claim weekly. It's a minimum of three weeks, but I think once you're through that three weeks, then you uh, should be able to claim every time you do your payroll. If they go back for a week, we, we spoke a, a week, last week or something about taking three weeks off and then maybe working the fourth week, then you will have to wait three weeks and make sure they're on furlough for three weeks and claim three weeks. You're not going to be able to claim each week. I don't think once they've gone back to work because each furlough period um, is starts again. Yeah. It's not like sick pay where you've got linked periods. It's not they're not linked. So if you go back to work and earn for a week, the furlough starts again, and you cannot claim for three weeks. But if it's ongoing, I think you might be able to. Okay, Angela Visor says I have young coaches to pay who are under sixteen and don't have NI numbers. How do I claim for them if I need an NI number? That's like the one yeah, I asked please, earlier. I will try and get an answer for that one for you. It may be that the form comes out and it's answered immediately, but it might just be one of those they didn't think about. Yeah. Beverly John says, I have a customer who hasn't been able to arrange an overdraft, hasn't had a business grant through yet. She used the last of her funds paying the March payroll and her cafe is shut. She wants to know if she can pay her staff when the grant comes through rather than in advance as she doesn't have the money. Is this, is this impossible because the RTI needs to be submitted beforehand? Well, you have to submit them before, on or before the date you pay somebody. So, if you, if you, if you do, I have to be very careful how I word this. If you submit an RTI for furloughed, the grant should be in within six days. You can claim up to two weeks in advance. So, if you do your RTI submission up to two weeks in advance, you may have the grant through. If the grant is only taking, they're hoping within six or seven days, with any luck, you may have the money in before. We have a shortfall during this first period. Yeah. Okay, Beverly, I hope that helps. And I hope your uh, your client survives because these uh, little cafes and things are really lovely part of English society. We don't want to see all those disappearing and becoming, uh, oh. well, I don't know what, you know. Uh, more charity shops or something rather. Uh, paying staff for bank holidays as holidays, that's, not break the furlough. That's a good point. I hadn't thought about that one because it's breaking the three weeks. I need to make some calls and I need to ring my member back, I think. Okay. Hmm. Suzanne Proctor, I think it's based on payment date. I am not sure what that refers to. 
it's payment date or pay date and i can never remember ian did give us ah, that, that's right. uh, okay. a definition and i i i got i forget that one uh client has taken over premises and needs rating completed valuation uh, office not does rating council have said need to contact the valuation office well leander i uh, yeah i'm sorry somebody somewhere must have the rates listing Do, doesn't the well if it's a recent property estate agent somebody like that who ever dealt with it wouldn't they know the land agents would they not have at least an idea well i think it's also it's got to be officially lodged with the council hasn't it to be paying rates or to get the grant you have to have a yeah, if just taking it over grant. i suppose yeah uh okay i took a screenshot of ian's sheet ah uh, that Thanks, yeah mate. right that'd be our payroll man ian um the payment day is the declared FPS contractually entitled to be paid. The payment date is the date they are contractually entitled to be paid. The payday is the date someone is paid. FPS must be sent on or before payday. Yeah, so it has to be sent before you pay them. It's still a question of whether you can defer payment, I think, because the, the FPS goes in, whether you can defer payment. Yeah, and so we suggest that FPS would therefore be four months then, but okay, we need we need to do that. Uh, Sylvia Borhill says rateable value should be on their rates bill or check online. I got a funny feeling you could find it, so thank you for that, Sylvia. Uh, um, oh, and so oh, she's, given us she's given us a hit. So it is www.gov.uk forward slash correct hyphen your hyphen business hyphen rates we put that up on the hub as well thank you for that sylvia um, a mine of information thank you so just to repeat that www.gov.uk forward slash correct dash your no hyphen sorry correct hyphen your hyphen business hyphen rates and uh if that works sylvia will no doubt accept Commission gladly. Anyway, I have a client, taxi driver, who has one employee whose contract takes minimum 20 hours per week. That is what she's being paid at the moment under furlough, but under normal circumstances, she works 36 to 40 hours per week. My client is a sole trader. That's from John Worrell. <coughs> uh, you take the average, aren't you? Yeah, I think you, I think you could use the average because it's, um, it's, normal, uh, it's normal pay, normal gross pay, so I think you take the average... Yeah. As, as long as there's proof that that is a proper average, and that's the thing, you are going to be called upon to to prove some of these things at a yeah. later date. So make sure but that if is. You've been uh, submitting that on an RTI, and you, you uh, the information is there. This is the the beauty of the new RTI system is that they actually have all the information that they want to check these out. Um, you know, those of us who think back very fondly to when we did payroll and we just submitted a figure each month and then reconciled it all at the end of the year. This is and Claire, exactly one of our, one of our, uh, Claire here, one of our fantastic members, obviously. Do you know when we'll be able to buy tickets for the summit in November yet? They will be out shortly, Claire. That's great. Lovely to know that you, you're, you're interested. We've got contracts signed on, on the event. Uh, it is taking a little bit longer because it's, it's run as, uh, in, in a centre that's adjoining a hotel and you know, their people are disappearing fast or have disappeared. So we are um finalizing a little bit at the moment as soon as we know exactly what is happening it will be it will be there but i understand that it will be out shortly if i get more information um i will let you have it but uh yeah i think we're going to make some something big this year it'd be great to go out and meet people won't it uh even if we do have to sit two seats apart anyway uh thank you claire anonymous sorry for being dim but can you furlough staff for three weeks then have them back to a cover contract and then fill them again for another three weeks. Yes. yes. Yeah, you can. Yeah. And you can actually have somebody working uh, a, a month uh, of which you furlough them for three weeks. Then they come in to do, I don't know, the payroll or yeah. something or other, and then go off for another three weeks. You can do all that sort of stuff with it, can't you? Um, and you can swap fellow staff as well. Yeah. Uh, if uh, well, it's holidays. holidays. I think people are giving their staff far too many holidays. <laughs> yeah. 
Can this we check on the holiday? Be, we'll come back. Yeah, I think we're going to have to come back on holiday because I think it's 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 as much employment law as anything else. Um, Linda says, surely furloughed staff can work another job. Uh, yeah, they've got stack shelves in Tesco's or whatever they do. Yeah, and uh, there's nothing to stop them, providing within the contract under which they're furloughed, it does say you have to either have to have permission to do that job or you can't do a job. Um, you know, so I, I think you need to check. So uh, the uh, other thing that's cropped up on that one as well, I think, in the last week is whether... Um, the current employee can stipulate the hours that they they can't work as well. So that, for example, if their normal working hours are nine till five thirty, that they shouldn't get another job be, be within that time. In case they're called back to work, they'd have to work outside. But we've never had a confirmation of that. That came. I did notice we've got another seventy nine questions here to answer. So I don't think we're going to get through all these. No, today. I don't think we are because it's already. Gosh, doesn't time fly when you're having fun? I know. Um, um, have you have we yet had a definitive answer on claiming the employment allowance whilst also receiving the JRS grant? No, I've got that one out to um, HMRC. Uh, if FPS submitted, then amended and resubmitted after nineteenth of March, are you able to claim? If it's submitted after the nineteenth of March, yeah. No, because the deadline the. Sorry, was that to do with the payroll submission? Just yeah, if FPS submitted, yeah. then amended and resubmitted after the nineteenth of March. If it was originally submitted, and the person is on the payroll, then it counts. I don't know if so. What you're saying is, if you do the FPS and then take put someone on and re resubmit it, an amended one. I'm not sure. I think with a lot of these, it's going to depend on people are going to be applying like mad uh, for all sorts of things. And once HMRC have checked it, then I think a lot of people are going to, or a lot of people could be getting messages back saying, sorry, you can't claim. This is not a valid claim. We will see. As long as it isn't a way of getting an, an extra person on that wasn't on there originally yeah. for an unscrupulous reason, which I'm sure it won't be. Shana's just come back to say that this, if you remember, she was asking the figure about the the division of 2,500 works out as a slightly different figure. She said, yeah. uh, This is in zero payroll. Now, we've oh, had this right. before, Jack, haven't we? Yeah. That when we're doing exams, depending on which yeah. piece of payroll they've got, you yeah. ask what two yeah. and two is, and yeah. they'll give different answers. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. I'm going to okay. pass on that one, Sean. Sorry, I'm ducking out on that one. I'm expecting Gary turn on here shortly, so perhaps he can answer yeah, questions. Yeah, we, right? maybe we can chat about that next week. But, I mean, I think a lot of this is going to be answered when the portal's open and we can see. I mean, a lot of this yeah. is speculative at the moment, so sorry we're still quite vague. Uh, Barry Pick says, the portal is going to be asking for each individual employee and what dates they are being furloughed and claimed for. So I think the portal will be based on each individual rather than a time period, as each employee could have different time periods. Yeah, I think that that's fair enough. I think that's probably what we're, we're saying. Because it's surprising how many people just don't have all monthly paid constant employees, obviously. Um, sorry, I'm uh, just reading another question, looking quickly at my answer sheet. Here. Usher, this is how I have worked it out for weekly pay. Okay. Um, that refers to one earlier, obviously. Liz, hi, I have an employee who is due to come back off maternity leave. <clears throat> Excuse me. When she went on maternity leave, she was working 40 hours, but it need to come back on 24 hours afterwards. What do I pay her on furlough? Average of her last 12 months amount that she's contacted to, or what she's contacted to to come back? I mean, I don't know. Do you, do you, I mean, if you're going to claim on a full-time salary when you're only coming back on a part-time, I think that will be seen as a, a reclaimable fiddle at some stage, won't it? Well, yes, but... The, the rules haven't allowed for that. Um, again, I'll have to look that up because there is uh, there is some information that I didn't check this morning on a on. A, I tell you what, I tell you what you could do if you've got these specific questions. If you go on to the gov.uk website and look at the uh, employer's guide to the job retention scheme, a lot of this is actually in there. This is where I'm getting a lot of my information from. There is a section on maternity pay and statutory pay. Um, I, I saw the headline, but I didn't read the detail today. So it's worth keeping an eye on that on a regular basis because they're updating this daily. 
um, I got the email this uh, first thing this morning to say it had been updated. Um, yeah, but that, and we'll put that up on the hub as soon as we, we get that link. My client says, Paul, I, um, Ingram, possibly, I don't know, has an employee who is contracted set out per week but gets paid monthly. But as months start and end different in a week, and if 30 or 31 days in a month, the pay varies per month. The March was done as normal until he had to close. From, for April, do I base it on last year's April pay slip? And then you can claim also the hours that it would have worked since lockdown began. Uh, this was, was, is this another one of those calculations whichever suits the employee more? I think so, yeah. Yeah. It's Try both ways of last month for the average. Yeah. Um, I'm looking at uh, anonymous. I'm looking at your parish council UTR at the moment. I'm trying to deal with that one, which is three fifty three. That came in. I don't know where you're up to, Gary. I've I've dropped down quickly to see if there's anything else that we haven't already. Yeah, I know. Yeah, if you uploaded. if you want to go, so I mean, if you want to take over the scrolling, as it were. Um. Uh. The parish council question i think you need the information that you need when you log in to do your rti so if you don't have a utr because it's a parish council then it may be that you don't need to put it in because they will be able to link it back i think what's going to happen is when you log on to the portal the information that you give is aimed at linking you across to all your RTI information. So if you don't have, if the, if the parish council doesn't have a UTR because it doesn't pay tax, then it may be that once it's identified you, it may not need it. I'm speculating here though. If a director has been paid an annual salary of 8,500 on RTI March, can you still claim furlough from the 24th of March for one week at 161.53? It's a minimum of three, isn't it? Yeah, minimum of three weeks. Right. I mean, you can put them on furlough and pay them 80%, but you can't claim the grant back until they've been on furlough for three weeks. And I haven't thought through the holiday implications of that. And Pam says, if staff were furloughed 24th of March and were working normally up to this date, did you say, Jackie, that the furlough date could be backdated the 1st of March? Sorry, missed it. The answer the phone rang. <laughs> um, <laughs> If they were furloughed on the 1st of March, then you can backdate the furlough. The, the earliest date that you can furlough them is the 1st of March and it can be backdated to them. So basically what this does is it catches up all of those who were furloughed or laid off without any money for several weeks. And now that the scheme is running, you bring them back in and you backdate their furlough income to the 1st of March. Um, if my lovely lady from uh, East Anglia is listening, that I chatted to yesterday about holiday pay, um, if you're listening, hopefully you picked up somebody's comment about paying holiday pay breaks the furlough, which I hadn't thought about yesterday. Mm, uh, but I'll contact you. I'll contact you early next week. I'm going to write down a picture. What about furloughed employees who have been asked by the employer to go into work daily for training <clears throat> yeah that doesn't affect their it provided these pure training yeah the training you have to be they, careful that they, their training doesn't include bringing up customers and yeah selling them yeah, something yeah uh for, for example uh, apprentices can carry on with their training and be furloughed but you have to if they're training you have to pay minimum hourly rates if i think if they're training you have to up you have to pay the full 100% of their salary. But you can only claim back 80%. But you have to top it up if they're training. Right. Sandra, just adding to the thing about the valuation, you have to put the business rates account number on the grant application. So if the rates bill not received is still being assessed by a valuation yeah. office, you won't have an account number. I've got a funny feeling this is one of those that's going to fall down between the gaps for people who are moving across and haven't got I'm just absolutely shocked that the valuations office isn't working. I was under the impression that most public authorities were still working, but um, but that does sound to me like a grant that it might not help now. But you should be able, if everybody else is getting it and you deserve it, you should be able to get it later than when they do open. Uh, oh, yeah, anyway, it doesn't get them through the next few months, though. 
Can you try and for a furlough period or something from there, right? Um, I've got one from Susanna about the date. Um, if you're listening to Susanna, I would say claim it and see. <laughs> it's they'll say yes or no. <laughs> yeah. It's lockdown Friday, obviously, Jackie. You're giving you're you're getting a bit lax. I'm there. getting a bit I'm getting a bit demob happy. I've got I've just had a massive delivery of very tiny plants that I've got to now pot up over the next 24 hours. So I'm getting demob happy for that. Josh has just said if you're claiming every three weeks and the and the monthly upper limit is two thousand five hundred, how will this work? Is well, this... you don't necessarily claim every three weeks. The first claim has to cover three weeks. To be perfectly honest, I would claim whenever you would do your normal pay. Um, if you're paying weekly, you've got to wait three weeks before you can put your first claim in, but then I think you should be able to claim there on weekly. If you're claiming monthly, if you're paying monthly, you claim the, for the first pay period in which you have three weeks of furlough. So you may not be able to claim for the end of March if it doesn't include three weeks furlough. You'd have to wait till the end of April and claim it, possibly have to wait till the end of April and claim it then because it's when you pay your monthly staff. Right, um, how do you calculate director's NIC for furlough pay in April when director's averaging means it doesn't kick in until accumulated salary reaches 8788? Well, if you're doing it that way and you're not claiming it, you're not, uh, you're not paying it, employers and I, I would think you're not paying it so you can't claim it back and once your employers NIC kicks in if we're still under furlough you should start to be able to claim it back when you're under furlough that's the difference between the two directors NIC's methods right Asha says thanks for that Jackie Paul of Smith says getting demob happy it's been one busy week <laughs> happy weekend to all yeah. um, and I've got one here from Tom good afternoon hope everyone at ICB is staying safe yes I hope we are thank you very much Tom hope you are too it's been oh this is this is a bit of praise I didn't realize that but anyway I'm going to read it anyway it's been great having daily contact available it's been both useful in terms of checking my understanding of the grant schemes available read coronavirus and it's also been really good to hear from other bookkeepers about their practices I ordered some of the new textbooks for FRS 102 and 105 on Tuesday. Whoops, he's disappeared. Where are we? Yeah. <laughs> um, wasn't expecting them to be dispatched until next week, but they turned up today, so I could so I get stuck in this weekend. Goes Stay safe weekend. and looking forward to the Digital Inspire Tour this year. Thank you, Tom. Yeah, well, we can get them dispatched, and thank you to the uh, good old post office. Uh, I've been getting letters as well quite regularly, frequently, so uh, they're still out there. Um, Flooding the streets. Thank you very much for that. Um, um, bookkeeping team, I've just seen your your next one. Um, I haven't. I will email you something. I will try and email you the link as soon as I found it. It may be this afternoon or it may be tomorrow morning if that's all right. I'll um, I'll get something to you as soon as I can. Bookkeeping team. And while we're just going through this, Tom has reminded me. Of course, whilst you are um, uh, there with a little, perhaps in some cases, a little bit of extra time. Although most of our members are telling, telling us this. They're doing more work than ever, and they're looking after their family, and they're looking after their partner, and their dogs, and their cats, sheep, cows, everything I'm getting stories about. Um, you can do some more study, and we've got a great set of books covering our whole syllabus. So if you want to move up to your next level, perhaps take on payroll if you haven't done it before, or self-assessment tax, all that sort of stuff, it's all available in our books. Um, and obviously, our train providers are actually all still up and running and, and, and everything else, so that's, that's really good. Um, so please get in touch and uh, all exams are running as well. They're all available still. You just book them in the normal manner, either through your training provider or direct with us. Um, and we can do mock papers. And obviously, as we've just learned, if you're with ideal schools, your one mock is, is booked through them. But if you want other mocks, then you, you book it direct with ICB. And uh, I now know that. <laughs> That's good. Um, Tom Clutton says, um, that was Tom that gave us that wonderful bit of praise, so we've got to answer this one, Jackie. My understanding is that the 10,000 grant is not subject to VAT, it is not the provision of services yeah. made to a taxable amount. And that's what you said, isn't it? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I'm pretty certain it's not. Um, uh, right, okay. Gary, have you, you I've just I've just actually sent you a message on the... Yeah, I have. No, I haven't. Seen it. Oh. I, I'll have a look. It's the very top one on the chat. Um, okay, I think... 
uh, what will happen with the rest of the questions is that they will be sent probably to me and I will go through them and anything that we haven't covered today, I'll try and get it out. I've got notes here of things that I'm going to follow up on. We'll try and have answers for you next week. I'll get some links up uh, to the nursery answer. I will try and deal with that over the weekend, bookkeeping team, um, if I can. I think I understand what you're asking for. Um, okay. Yeah. I think that's probably... I think we're probably... We need to give you a bit of a rest, I think, Jackie. Are you, oh, there's just one more. Sorry, rest? Gary, just one more from Trish. I have an agent's account, but was advised that submission had to go through the employer account. Can I still do this? If you are a full agent with PAYE, you can make the claim or your employer can make it for you. That's in me. Great. Me notes. Um, please note... Uh, agents authorised to act on PAYE matters can make the claim on an employer's behalf using their ID and password. Um, you'll need to tell your agent which UK bank account you want the grant to be paid into, or the employer can make it themselves if they want to do it and not use their agent. But the employer has to also to have logging on details. Okay. Great. Well, I think that was good. Um... Just to remind you all, week after next, it's the Inspire Tour. Please make sure that you, you look at what's available and book in. Um, it would be good to have a great number of you. And I'm really pleased to say that Auto Entry are once again sponsoring. They had hoped to be sponsoring a city-by-city -city tour that we were doing, but obviously we can't do that anymore. But they have very generously said, no, we like your bookkeepers. ICB bookkeepers are special people. We still want to be part of it. And uh, they have, uh, as I say, very kindly continued with their sponsorship. Which, uh, which means that we, we are, as always, very pleased to be working with them. We've been doing that for some time now. They do keep winning awards, uh, and not least because whenever we give them an award, they shout and scream and jump up and down before coming up onto stage, which is always good to hear. So um, our best to Brendan and all the, all the people with Auto Entry. And to all of you, I hope you have a happy and safe weekend. Don't risk it and jump out just yet. Don't go, uh, don't go mad. Don't go speaking to strangers or patting dogs or whatever it is you do. Stay safe. Um, you know, you're all very important to us. We want you to, to hang in there. We want us all to come out of this at the end um, with some stories to tell our grandchildren or great-grandchildren or whatever they might be. Uh, but other than that, we, we need to be, we'll be working between now and uh, sort of June time on various things to help you take advantage of what I think is going to be um, a difficult transition back into full-time working. But I also believe there will be some major opportunities for business, for bookkeepers, and those people that you've stuck with throughout their difficult times of being furloughed or laid off or whatever, will be grasping at your hand to help you uh, pull them out of the doldrums and back into business when this is all done. So it's all very important that we carry on. And don't forget, if there's anything that you think we're not covering properly on here, something else that you would like, something else you need from ICB, either on this program, on the website, whatever, we're always open to uh, any suggestions and we look forward to hearing from you. So thank you all very much. Have a safe weekend. See you on Monday at three. Cheers. Bye, oh, everyone. Good luck with your forms. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>